Hello and welcome to video tutorial one, uh, creating a house in Google SketchUp. Okay, so um, you should have found your way to your Google Classroom page. Um, and on there, if you go, uh, this is a class I'm currently uh, using to show you here, it's ATTE. You should have your own class code there at the moment. And under class code, uh, sorry, classwork, um, there should be SketchUp portfolio. OK, so when you click that one there, um, it should open up a, a new window. Um, now, mine uh, is already in the next page here because it takes a while to open it. Now, yours should say uh, your name at the beginning of here and then followed by SketchUp portfolio. OK, uh, if it doesn't have your name written at the beginning, uh, it's not editable files. So uh, you need to put your hand up and your teacher will see if he can help you uh, sort that one out before we get going. OK. Right. So assuming you're sorted on that, we're going to go down to. Uh, about halfway in, we're going to go to slide 19 now it may change slightly the slide number but um, it should look like this that's what we're looking for and under it slide 20 where it says add three screenshots of your finished house to this page so our mission for this lesson and possibly the next one is to try and draw a house uh, with various sort of features on the house and then we're going to screenshot the house and we're going to place a, a picture of it from above from a side and a 3d picture of it on this slide here so that's our objective and to get more marks or to get the marks for the lesson we've got the slide just above number 19 in my case again the number might be different for you um, this is a list of all the things you can do to your house in order to get sort of more marks and the higher your mark the higher your grade for this subject okay so with that let's get started right minimize the browser there and we're going to go down to the bottom left hand corner and select the windows button and we're going to scroll down to s for sketchup so there we go sketchup now in my case it says 2018 yours might say uh, 2019 or maybe even 2020 or beyond it depends when you're seeing this video versus when i've made it so my version is 2018 and I'm going to go down to the little icon here with a sort of stairway in red there so we're going to click that one and that'll take just a moment for that to open okay so now it's opened i'm going to select choose template which is the button at the top here choose template and then architectural design millimeters now we always use millimeters when we draw in SketchUp or any CAD software uh, in the UK so we want to get used to selecting this one every time architectural design architectural design millimeters so click that and then start using SketchUp and wait for it to load okay so now my page is loaded um, I've got a lady here in the center of mine. You might not have that same character. You may have a man or an old lady or, or who knows. Uh, it depends on the version you're on. But um, what you should have is a gray background to your screen. If your screen is not gray at the moment, you did not select uh, architectural design millimeters. So what I need you to do is to close down the program, reopen it and watch the last minute of this video that's the previous minute to this one uh, and do that bit again so that we've got a gray background and you've selected architectural design millimeters now if you have that we should also have um, a box down here where it says measurements and there's a box here now if you don't have that then you probably need to press the uh, full screen button at the top here uh, it might look like you're in full screen, but you're probably close, but not quite. And it tends to cut this off here. So if you just select full screen, that should bring that up there. If not, put your hand up and your teacher will help you out. OK, for those of you who are still with us, um, we're going to go to view toolbars 
and we're going to turn on a couple of extra options so number one is large tool set here and you have to click the box itself you can't click the writing uh, irritating as that is for some reason it doesn't work so I'm going to click large tool set and we're going to go down to views I'm going to click that one as well and then click close now it seems to be quite laggy sometimes on the school's computers for some reason when we click close on that box so bear with it it will allow you to click again in a moment okay once we've got that we're going to select the uh, select button or cursor tool same thing uh, and we're going to drag a box so click the left click button on your mouse and drag a box over this lady and then press delete on your keyboard so top uh, right hand corner of your keyboard press delete and that gets rid of the lady there <clears throat> or person in your case and I'm now going to go to the shapes tool uh, at the top of the screen here click that once I'm going to hover over what's called the origin point that's the point at which all these lines on the screen cross so I'm just going to hover there I'm going to hover there it should uh, give me a little sort of cross in the center of a circle um, I'm going to click there once I'm not going to click and drag I'm just going to click it once um, and then move my mouse it seems a bit odd when you first do it but you will get used to it so we do that and then I'm going to type in on my uh, keyboard 9000 and if you look in that dimensions box I mentioned earlier I'll point to it now um, you can see down there you'll see as I type it in it comes up there I'm going to do it again so type in 9000 comma 9000 and then I'm going to press enter on the keyboard okay so I've got this box now depending if you're zoomed in or not your box could be really tiny like that because you're a long way away or it could be really really big because you're close in but either way as long as you've typed that in you should be fine um, and we should have a box that's 9000 by 9000 so next we're going to turn this box into a 3d cube by selecting the push pull button at the top um, click that once and I'm going to hover over the square that I've created here I'm going to click it once so just click once don't click and drag just click once and then move your mouse again it does feel a bit odd when you do it without dragging but um, it's just how these programs work so I'm going to move the mouse so I've got this sort of box moving up and down I'm now going to let go of the mouse and type in on my keyboard and notice down on the distance box uh, that we looked at before you're going to see me typing it in 11,000 no comma just press enter enter on the keyboard there we go and I'm now going to select the zoom extents button on the top bar so click that one once and it makes whatever I've drawn fit inside the screen here I'm now going to select the orbit tool click that once and I can click and drag now to move my cube brain so I can see all around it see it's a little bit like a computer game now yeah okay right so once you've got that and you're happy with it we're going to select the line uh, tool there click that once and I'm now going to hover along this top edge until I get this blue dot I might have to move it a bit more so let's just rotate that to see it a bit better go back to that tool there we go uh, midpoint so I'm going to click there once and I'm now going to got this line that it wants to attach to there but now I've got to find where to put the other end so let's go to the side I'm going to get it to go along this edge here and I want to create a roof so I'm going to get an angle that looks right for a roof um, I'm going to go about there there's no right or wrong just anywhere down here at an angle you're happy with but it has to be along this edge so you'll have this red square meaning that you're along an edge somewhere so I'm going to click there there we go and I got this this uh, line I'm quite happy with the angle if I click the orbit tool again I can have a look and see yeah I'm quite comfortable with the angle of that I've now got to produce another one but I want to go down the other side now to do that I need it to start at the same point which is easy because I just need to hover over that line there when it turns green the dot on the end click once don't click and drag uh, <clears throat> starting it's easy but I want it to go to the same uh, distance down as the other one so it's the same angle 
So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over to the end of that line. I'm just going to hover there for three seconds. So one, two, three. Now this is an intelligent program, so it knows what I want to do, or at least it has a good guess. You'll notice it's got this dotted line that seems to appear. So if I now go down this side here, I've got a red square, so I'm on the edge, but I've also got this red dotted line. That means that I'm in line with uh, the, other, the end of the other line that I've already drawn. So it's predicted that that's where I want to go. So I'm going to click there. There we go. And orbit again. Let's have a quick look. That's the tool up here. Let's have a quick look around it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy that that's, that's straight. Lovely. Great. OK, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit by using the wheel on your mouse. Scroll inwards and outwards there. There you go. And I'm now going to use that push pull tool again that I used at the beginning. So uh, to make it 3D. So let's click that one there and hover over one of these two triangles. I'm going to go for this one here. It should go dotted. Now, if you haven't drawn your line here all the way from edge to edge, it won't have a dotted um, pattern in the middle of this triangle. The dotted pattern will spread all the way across all of it, you see. So if that's the case, you need to go back and redraw that line. Um, so go edit undo uh, to fix that. So edit undo draw line to fix that if that line's wrong. But if not, we're going to go for this triangle here. We're going to click it once. Now don't click and drag, just click once. Um, and then you'll see it allows me to remove that surface. So I'm going to push it all the way to the back there. And then I'm going to click again when I'm all the way to the back. And it says offset limited. There we go. All the way to the back. Click again and it's removed that top surface. Let's have a look around. There we go. So you can see where we're going with this now. We're going to do the same for this side. So the push pull tool, hover over that triangle, click once, don't click and drag, just all the way to the back there and click again. Okay, so we've got a basic outline of a house now. Um, pretty easy, not too bad to start with. Now, what else do we want to add to our house? Well, uh, the next thing we want to add is probably a door and maybe some windows. That would be the easiest thing to add next. So I'm going to go over to the shapes tool here and I'm going to draw a door. Now I want my door to be in the center of this distance here. So I'm going to draw it in two halves. So if I zoom in with my scroll wheel on the mouse there, I'm going to click where it says midpoint and I'm going to put it somewhere on that face. Now, if it won't allow you to draw on that face, what you want to do is you want to turn the house so that it is face on to the camera. OK, about there, that's fine. And click the square tool again and I'm going to draw it on that face, starting from the midpoint there. Don't click and drag, just click once. And then wherever looks about right, just put your door in. So I'm going to make mine, this is half the width of the door. You'll see in a minute how it goes together. So let's go, ooh, let's go back there. And I'm going to do another one. But I'm, this time I'm going to go the other direction. So I don't know how far my first one, how big my first one was across the top, what measurement that is across the top there. But I want to go the same amount the other way. So the easy way to find that out is for this second square, oh, I'm going to hover um, at the start and end point. So I've started there, I've clicked it there already. I'm going to hover at this end point here. And if I look down in the dimensions box, that's the one down here. If I look down in there when I do that, it tells me that it's 3,163 millimeters high. That's uh, this box here and it's 747 wide, okay? So what I can do is I can just type those measurements in, but going that way, and I don't even need to type the, uh, the, the length in because it's made it, it knows I wanna do it in line with it because I hovered there for three seconds. So we're gonna start that again. Let's go right from scratch. So back to the shapes tool there. I'm gonna click on the bottom corner 
once. I'm going to hover here for three seconds and I'm going to look down in the dimensions box down here and I'm going to remember that second number. So I'm going to hover there for three seconds. One, two, three. I just need to remember 747 and 3163. Okay, so 3163 and 747. I'm going to type that in. 3163 comma 767. Enter. Right, so I've now got a, a door. If I use the pan tool, that's this one here, I can move it sort of up and down, left and right. Um, I've now got a door. Uh, that is in the center um, and half of it's that side, half of it's that side. I can now use the cursor or select tool, pointer if you want to call it that, and I can click one of those lines and press delete on my keyboard. That's on the top right hand corner normally. So delete on the keyboard, press delete and that should remove that line there. You may have to click it twice. Uh, but it removed that line there and I'm going to scroll out with the wheel on my mouse to get a little further away and change the angle a bit so I can see it to the side see if it looks right it looks good to me okay so next for me is to draw some windows now I want my windows to be um, a equal distance from the edge of the house and I want them to be the same size so to do that I'm going to select the shapes tool the square one and I'm going to click on one of the corners here and don't click and drag just click on one of the corners here. I'm going to zoom in a bit so I can see it a bit better and again looking at the dimensions box down here you can see that I'm going to type in I'm not clicking anywhere I'm just going to type in 500 comma 500 enter okay and I could do the same on the opposite side as well so Click on that corner there, uh, move the cursor in this direction somewhere, and then looking in the dimensions box, I'm going to type in 500, comma, 500, enter. Okay, so I've got these two boxes. Now they're not my windows, they're just a guide to find the corner for my windows so that they're equidistant from the side. So I'm going to select the shapes tool again, and I'm now going to click the corner of one of those boxes and I'm going to move it in the direction I want it to go and I've got to figure out what sort of size I want those windows to be so let's go with let's go with 2000 by 2000 so again looking in the dimensions box down here again I'm going to move it in the direction I want and then type in 2000 comma 2000 enter okay and again on this side click once don't drag move it in the right direction and type in 2000 comma 2000 enter there we go right so um, now I've used those boxes to find where I want the corner of my window to be I can now delete them so I'm going to select the uh, eraser tool here and I'm going to try and delete those lines there there we go and this side same again might even try and delete that bit of line. Ah, see, that was a mistake. So edit, undo, puts that back in place. Okay. <clears throat> so orbit tool again. Let's have a look around. Uh, lovely. Right. Next, we're going to add um, a chimney to the top of the house. Now, if we go back to the browser and slide 19 or whichever slide it is for you, it's, it's around that number, um, you're going to see that we have these options for points. And as I mentioned before, um, these points are how many points you're going to get for this uh, subject. Uh, the more points you get, the higher your grade will be for the subject. Um, so we're going to have a go now at adding the chimney outside the boundary of the house. Um, just to show you how easy that is. And then we're really going to have a go at the chimney inside the boundary of the house. So I'll show you the outside boundary first. And if you're having difficulty up to this point, stick with that one because you want the five points. Um, if you're like, now this is fairly easy, I can follow it. Then uh, watch the second part where I 
uh, do the inside, uh, the chimney inside the boundary of the house uh, in about a minute's time from now. Okay, so let's do the one on the outside boundary. So I'm going to flip the house upside down for this. And I'm going to have my chimney on the back of the house. So it's going to look a bit weird for a second. Uh, I'm on the under face of the house. I'm on the, under the floor right now. Um, and I've got that surface flat to the camera. Now it's hard for me to describe that, but you basically can see a square on the screen and the floor is flat to the camera. It is not say at a slight angle like this or like that or anything like that. It's virtually flat to the camera. Now that will help a lot when you come to draw something that uh, is not on a surface. So I'm going to select the shapes tool and I'm going to, where should I do it? Let's do it uh, slightly to the side. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to draw on this edge somewhere a square or a, you know, sort of rectangle, something like that. That's about the size of a, the base of the chimney that I'd like. There we go. So I click twice for that. And I'm going to now change the view so I'm above the house use the scroll wheel on the mouse to scroll out a little bit and again go back to the push pull tool click that once and I'm going to hover over this square it should go dotted when I hover on it click it once and then I can use the scroll wheel don't click and drag when you pull this up just click it once and then I'm going to pull it up above the house to whatever looks about right for a chimney there we go click again and there is a chimney on the outside boundary of the house lovely there's a there's another five points for you there fantastic uh we're now going to i'm going to undo that one so we're going to go edit undo which uh brings it back down to just a square on the floor i'm going to go edit undo again to remove it i'm not going to delete it by selecting it and pressing delete on the keyboard because you'll find generally it is much better to select edit undo if you have the choice to do so for sort of complicated reasons really so try and go edit undo if you do have the option when you want to remove something um, so now we're going to have a go at version two that was the chimney inside the boundary of the house that means we're going to draw a chimney on the roof basically so I'm now looking at the roof of the house and I want it flat to the screen so I'll put the house at a bit of an angle so that that surface is flat to my screen as best I can and I'm going to draw a square on the roof somewhere that I would like my chimney to be so if that's the front of my house there and that's the back I'm going to go with um, about there click once don't click and drag just click once and whatever size you want it to be just click when you're happy I'm going to go with there. Um, I'm now going to change the view of my house by selecting the orbit tool again to a slightly odd angle. I'm going to change it so that it's try and get this sort of angle here. You might have to adjust it a bit more about that one there. You might have it adjust it a bit more in a minute, but um, sort of slightly side onto the to the roof and then zoom in as if you're stood on the roof. Now that angle is really important because if you can't do the next part, it's because your angle needs to be adjusted slightly for it to understand what you're trying to do. Okay, so I'm gonna select the lines tool button there and I'm going to click once on the corner here of the box that I've drawn. Click once and I'm now gonna hover over here for three seconds just like I did when I did the apex roof I'm gonna hover there for three seconds I'm not clicking there I'm just gonna hover one two three and then I'm gonna move up until you can see I get this this red line that that comes up yours might not be red the colors don't matter it depends uh, in what orientation you drew your house at the beginning so as long as it's a solid color it doesn't matter it could be red blue uh, or green I think um, but you've got this solid red line and you've got three dots. You've got the one where my cursor is at the moment, one at the bottom and one there. Now, when you've got all three of those and this dotted uh, line down here as well, you're going to click. Now, it's really important that you have all three of those lines or this will not work. OK, so I'm going to click there once and I'm now going to draw another line going straight down. Now, that line should be a solid color if 
you did the last step uh, correctly. If not, go ahead and undo and redo it. So it should be a solid color and there should be a dot at the top of the bottom. So we're going to click that once. The solid color means it's in line with one of the axes. So if I scroll out for a minute, so you can see what I mean. Um, you can see we have a, a blue axis there, a red axis there, and a green axis there. Okay, so that tells you that they are the solid directions that you can draw things in for your house. So when it turns into those colors, it means it's in line with those axes, it's parallel with those directions. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to draw another line. Now uh, we're going to draw it from this corner here. So click there and then we're going to hover this time in the bottom corner there for three seconds. One, two, three. And then we're going to go up. I didn't click there. I just hovered. Um, we're going to go up and we're going to uh, again get those three dots, a solid green line from in my case, but it could be a different color for you um, and a dotted line going down. So you should have all three of those dots and click again and now straight down. Uh, to join that last surface up and then we're just going to join the last one up there to create the top there we go now because we've created that surface it's now flat um, which means we can now use the push pull tool to create a chimney that comes straight up okay so the push pull tool is here click that once Hover over the surface you want, that's this one here. Click it once, again don't click and drag, click it once and then just move it up to a height you're happy with. Uh, back there looks good for me, I can always change it if I want later on. Yep, yeah, looks okay to me. Maybe a little bit shorter. Um, to make it a little shorter, again click the push pull tool, just click the surface once and move it down to where you want it, maybe there. That might be a little bit better. Okay, so we've got the chimney on the top there. Now for my chimney, I'm going to want a chimney pot on the top. That's the round uh, sort of part of the chimney that goes on top here. So to do that, I want to find the center of this square. So I'm going to use the line tool and, oh, correction. I'm going to look vertically straight on down to that surface first because it's going to help. I'm going to use the line tool and click on the line tool. Click, for the, click on the corner, click on the opposite corner. And I'm going to do the same again for these opposites. So that one and click on that one. And then we're going to create a circle. So the circle tool is on the left hand side, about halfway up. Click that one. And from the center of this, these two lines crossing, I'm going to click there once. And now I'm going to move outwards. Now I like round numbers because they make, they just make life easier when you come to do other things when they're in whole round numbers. So, um, I'm going to make this 200. So I didn't click and drag. I just click once for my circle there. I'm going to type in 200 on the keyboard and then press enter on the keyboard there. And that's created my circle there. I now want to remove these lines that help me find that circle. They're called construction lines. You use them just to help you find something. I don't need them now though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the uh, select tool again, that's the cursor, and I'm going to delete all the lines that I don't need that I use to uh, find it. So I can click it, it turns blue, and then I'm going to press delete on the keyboard. And same again for this one, click it, press delete on the keyboard, click it with the mouse, press delete on the keyboard, click it with the mouse, press delete on the keyboard, and then I'm going to go for these ones here. Now, if when you do that, it deletes a surface like that, for instance, um, go edit undo that brings it back and then select another line or be slightly more careful to make sure you click the line and not the surface okay so sometimes it will do that even though you've selected the line anyway um, just choose another line and come back to that line you'll find after you deleted another one for some reason it'll let you do it so delete those ones make sure it's turned blue there we go and I've got that surface there now so I'm going to Use the orbit tool to click and drag so that I can create my chimney and the push pull tool. Click that one, hover over the surface, click once and just move the cursor to your happy. I don't know, back there looks good to me. There we go. Click again. 
done. Right, use the scroll wheel on the mouse, the wheel on the mouse to zoom out. Orbit, you can have a look around it, see if you're happy with it. Now, add all the doors and windows that you'd like. There's a pan tool there, which is the hand tool that allows you to move it left and right again. So do that scroll wheel, zoom in, um, <clears throat> add whatever you'd like to it. Perhaps a second wind, uh, sorry, a third and fourth window here, maybe something on the other side. You could also add something like a garage. Um, and other features like that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some color to the surfaces. So we're going to go to the paint bucket here. And I'm going to select by this drop down box here, I'm going to select glass and mirrors. Now this might not work because it depends on a few things. So we're going to see glass and mirrors, I'm going to select this translucent glass blue that button there and then I'm gonna click it on this window okay and then I'm gonna do the same translucent glass I'm gonna click on that window as well now it seems to have worked on that one window or rather none of them in my case actually so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the surface and press delete so it's the select tool there and the surface there and press delete okay um, it's just sort of a funny thing that happens sometimes with this program so we'll try that now when I do it for some reason it's doing the whole surface of the house so I'm having particularly difficult with the difficulty with this so I'm gonna go edit undo so I'm back to this I'm now going to redraw those windows by selecting the square tool which was rectangle sorry which is there rectangle there and I'm going to click in the corner and then click in the opposite corner and then the same on this one click in the corner and then click in the opposite corner now I'm going to try adding the glass there we go it's just a funny thing with this program sometimes that you have to redraw surfaces before you add color um, but hey ho there we go now we've got it so we've got that on there now you could obviously draw a little um, window in your door if you like and um, you can fill that in or you can add a different material of your door so there is wood on here there we go there's wood and we can select whatever wood we like I'm gonna go for what should I go for let's go for cherry original that looks good to me and drop that on there there we go orbit tool have a look around you could even go in really close and you could add a door handle on there if you want which could take uh, quite a lot of work but I will notice it when it comes to marking and I'll give you some good marks for that so I'm going to close the uh, box there for adding that and we're doing quite well now so uh, if we actually we reopen it we're going to go to let's go to uh, we want something for the roof maybe so roofing there we go and I'm going to go for Spanish tile, that is good. Let's do that one there. Let's change the view a little bit and select Spanish tile again and that one there. Yep, very nice. And perhaps I want brick or something for the walls here. So let's go with brick cladding and sliding. Siding, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to go with antique brick, sounds lovely. Go for that side that side rotate it to get the other two back to antique that side and that side there we go so we've got some surfaces for our house that look appropriate now um, I probably want the same surface for this chimney so let's do that one as well while I'm here you can choose whatever surface finish you like of course um, I'm just going with what I uh, I like the look of can do the top of that one there and for the chimney that's a bit more difficult I might just use a color so if I go to colors and down to probably a black I'd imagine for that or a dark gray so let's go for a dark gray there there we go that's my chimney in dark gray lovely so that will do me on that for now let's close the uh, colors tray or the paint tray um, great so 
next thing you want to do is you want to start uh, adding things to gain more marks based on the list. So we're going to go back to the list here. Now we've done, whoops, uh, we've done the apex roof. That means you have a roof with a point in the middle. You've got that. But even better for more marks, we've got one that's perfectly symmetrical in the center, which if you followed as I have, it will be as I've done it, that is. Um, then there's the chimney outside the boundary of the house. Well, that was that was easy. We covered that one. For most of you, that'll be fine. Um, we've also got vertical chimney inside the boundary of the house. Well, we've done that too. That's, uh, that's this one here. So what we're left with now is we've done windows, color for surfaces, um, evenly spaced windows, cover that as well. I've got a green garden, an accurate white picket fence, um, lamp that's that's particularly difficult when we go on to those so leave those ones to the end of these ones here now if you do draw anything particularly interesting that's not on this list i do have 30 points reserved to give to any student for something interesting so if you add a garage a swimming pool um uh, who knows maybe a hangar for your aircraft um, I really don't mind what you add but the more interesting it is the more marks um, I can give you for that um, and uh, particularly if you can download things and put them in so to download um, what you'll need to do is you'll need to select this 3d warehouse button okay now I can't show you on my desktop for various reasons um, I can't show you that what happens when we click that button there but if you click that button there you will find it takes you to a place called Google Warehouse now that has other people's drawings uh, on it uh, drawings of cars houses or everything you'd ever thought of really um, you can select download uh, into directly into your drawing there's a button to select it when you find a drawing you like and it will drop it into your page Okay, so if you were to do that, that would be wonderful, um, including the picket fence. And you can download a car, but you can't have the full 20 points unless your car is drawn by yourself. I will give you uh, 5 to 10 points if you download a car, particularly, uh, we're definitely looking at 10 points if you can put your car in a garage and the garage is on the side of your house. Okay, right. Um, off you go, see what you can draw.